All right, I screwed up and didn't save at the end of the last episode, so I do all that shit in the previous episode over again. So I finally made it to Windia. Usually you make it to Windia earlier in these games than I did here. Oh, oh these people have wings, okay. Not as big as Nina's wings, though. Can these people fly at all? Hmm. Up, oh, you're at war. So, Windia was always, um... Hey, it's Momo. <laughs> hey, it is Momo. Holy shit. Hey, <laughs> even went with the name. Oh, oh, she's a she's a master. Okay. HP up. Well, she doesn't. I don't know. She doesn't have any downsides to her being an apprentice to her. Oh yeah, I looked it up. Like, I'm not imagining things. There are no downsides to having Momo as a master. So, maybe I should just... I mean, I was kind of avoiding the master-apprentice system. Because I didn't want to upset the, uh, the... I didn't want to upset the balance of the characters too much, because I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, Nina, apparently, I didn't think so. But if she's just gonna jack up their HP without any downside, everyone's getting Momo. Oh, parallel dimension. <laughs> Easter eggs. Okay, so in case you haven't played it, Momo was a character, one of the playable characters, or rather a party member. In Breath of Fire 3. Looked just like that, only the color scheme is a little bit different. I guess because the art style of this game is a little less cartoony. Hmm. <laughs> Trade for items. What? What is this? Oh, it's the dude who trades in fish. I haven't done fishing in this. Anyway, Momo was a character from Breath of Fire 3. She wasn't a terribly important character, though she did have her own little sections of the story her balance was that she had very high attack power but her accuracy was low but she was she had some healing abilities which made her a good um second line healer character at least in the earlier parts of the game you could um yes i have heard in the earlier parts of the game anyway she had healing abilities that were second only to the main character, Ryu. And you could use her as a sort of secondary healer. I guess later on in the game, her healing abilities sort of... Sort of, uh, drop off as far as usefulness go. But, you know, it's still there. Oh, thanks. There's nothing over your head. I'm getting some weird slowdown in this section of the game. What's going on here?
So I don't think, even though we're seeing Momo here, talk about she's in a different dimension, I'm not getting the impression that Breath of Fire 4 takes place even in the same universe as the earlier Breath of Fire games. So I never played the first one, or at least not really. Two and three were the games that I played previously, and this is the first time I'm playing through four. Now, oh, dragon flying, what was that, to the east? So clearly Breath of Fire 1, 2, and 3, Ring of the Wind, huh? 1, 2, and 3 all take place in the same universe, just not within the same time. So 1 takes place at the beginning, and then 2 uh, takes place some significant number of years later. <sighs> Maybe I should equip that. <laughs> it feels like something that's useful. Like she's going to get hit with a lot of wind. Breath of Fire 2 takes place, uh, let's just say, a couple hundred years later. And you have a lot of characters that have the same names, like the same themes reoccur. You have a Nina, who is the Princess of Windia. You have a Ryu, which is a member of the Dragon Clan. Breath of Fire 2 comes along, it's the same thing. Nina, Princess of Windia. Um, although a bit of an exiled uh, princess and reuse member of Dragon Clan, but there were some references to the original Breath of Fire taking place in the same timeline. Breath of Fire th 3 comes along, and it's definitely within the same, uh, it's definitely within the same timeline, just very much later. And one of the things that um, kind of differentiates, I mean, aside from, like, everything, changing. It's a different map, even though it's supposed to take place in the same world. But there's like the mural during the intro sequence, um, as well as, like you've run into it later at the Dragon Village, depicting the, f I'm guessing it was a fight from the first game, or the second game, uh, the first game. Yeah. Also, the character of Deus was um, the same character uh, that you fought in Breath of Fire 1, apparently. And... Breath of Fire 2, you had a character called Blue, who returns in Breath of Fire 3. Uh, what was her name in 3? It went by a different name, wasn't Blue. Um, I, I can't remember what her name was. But she's not a playable character, but she does, she has some plot significance, and then you, and then you can apprentice under her. But anyway, I, I as this relates to Windia, is, of course, Windia appears in all of these games. But three, the characters were different, like, they still built their city, like, up on a platform, so they're, like, in the sky, but they don't have the ability to fly anymore. Nina has wings, but most of the other people in Windia don't have wings, so they come across almost like they're vestigial. And I read some things that say, like, oh, well, they're just decorative, or, like, well, I don't think they're it's not like a bow she's wearing, because she's capable of moving them. But she just can't fly. This world we're looking at now has got to be a different... Different, like, retelling of the story. Not within the same timeline, just in the future or the past or anything. It's like a different version of the world. I'm not seeing anything that gives me an indication that it's connected. Other than... It's sort of like the Final Fantasy games, in a sense, where... Each one is its own world. Unless you're talking about like a direct sequel, which there were a couple of those. Each one takes place in its own world and you see a lot of the same themes. So in this case, the theme we're looking at is that city called Windia. Not the actual city just recreated in different games. Just the, the concept of it. And the concept of a princess with wings on her back named Nina. Not the same character. Not a descendant of the previous characters. This is just a completely new character built in the same themes. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Let's continue with the story. Oh, alright. You look goofy.
Oh, it's in his bedroom. <laughs> Probably be in a throne room or something. They worship a dragon? It's a detailed model for a PS1 game. Of course, it was the only thing in the environment, so that makes sense. His uh, sprite looks like he has an eye patch. All right, we've read that before. I did not explore the entire town, so let's take a look at that. Oh, I didn't even explore the whole castle. Jeez, even these other kind of rooms. There's a lot in here. Are they just trying to make the place seem big, or does all this have some importance? like it'll show up later. Ooh, a dungeon. We're definitely going to be back here later. Hello. Yeah, what treasure? I like treasure. I'm a big fan of treasure. Nina's running animation is so goofy looking. Look at this. Her hands are just down at her sides. <laughs> I 
Too much slowdown in this area. I guess it's a little bit larger in terms of how much they're trying to render here. I've already been here. Um, where's my way out? I got lost. Where the fuck am I? I haven't even... Uh, there's gotta be a... Oh, here we are. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's what I didn't know what I was doing. Wait, can I steal some shit from you? Yes, I can. Just stealing all sorts of shit. I'm a terrible human being. Or a terrible whatever the fuck Nina is. this weird bread thing in Breath of Fire 3 where when they was known for producing bread and it like it's it didn't have any like relevance to the story it's just like there's a bunch of bread factories or something bakeries that's producing an enormous amount of bread and like you could wander in there and see the factories running and all of that I can't rotate the camera all the way. I don't know, it's kind of weird. And like, you don't have to go in there and see that. It's just something as part, just part of the Windia map with these bread factories. You're not f from here. Huh. Alright, let's see if there's any other buildings or anything I can go into. It's a really small town. The castle's actually bigger than the town. That's something that I noticed that they definitely put less effort into making the towns large. Now, okay, so Windia in Breath of Fire 3, and I, I'm going to keep comparing it to 3 because they were both PlayStation 1 games, and they're pretty close to each other in terms of time and all of that shit. But, like, Windia in this game is a small place. Look at it. This is basically the entire town. I, in fact, I ran to the edge without even realizing it. Get back in there. Get back in there. Not counting the castle, which is not part of it, really. Here... To here. I'm, I'm on the other side of the town already. And they crammed all these buildings in really tight. And it's it seems to be something that they're doing a lot with not just the game, um, not just the towns, but also, like, the environmental design. Like the uh, the dungeons and all that kind of stuff. The dungeons are not large. And I get that, okay, so, they went and they, um, oh, here's the shop. They even have a building with the shop in it. They didn't, they haven't gone and, oh shit, I'm not going to have enough money to outfit all my characters. I'm out of money now. <laughs> instead of... Instead of having... Um, oh, I have a lot of shit that I can sell, though. I'm not gonna do this on the camera.
Breath of Fire 3, on the other hand, had, like, relatively large environments that sprawled out. But they weren't as densely packed with either detail or items as we're looking at here. So Windia spread out for a little while, then you ran into a loading screen, and it would take you to a second part of the town. And then you ran into another loading screen that would take you to the castle. So they really put some effort into making the town feel larger. Of course, games never seem to have towns of, like, realistically large sizes, even that felt small. I guess you could maybe say that when, in a game like this, when you run to, like, Windia here, you're not looking at the entire city. You're just looking at this little corner that the game displays to you. But the entire city just spreads out for a while. And it's a little harder to make that claim with Breath of Fire 3 because it's... you the way it's designed, it makes it feel like that's the entire thing, even though it has a population of, like, 30. But still, it's... Um, I can't say I'm a fan of what they did here. It's a different way of doing it, and they took a risk, and it does look nice until you get into a dungeon that requires you to shift the camera around and around and around all the time just to get through everything. Then it gets frustrating. Like, that first couple of towns we ran into, really, you really did need to rotate the camera around, like, all the damn time. In this, you don't, you can get through Windia without doing that. I guess maybe they realized eventually, like, you know, stop making people do that. No one wants to do that. But they had already done the early towns. Anyway, we're 21 minutes in. Let's make our exit and then make camp and see what everyone has to say and then end the episode. Uh, the song says. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, anyway, 22 and a half minutes in. <laughs> 